Hi, I'm Jay from Real Street Performance. Today we're gonna to talk about engine break-in. So while you won't get a shortage of opinions on how to do this, um, I'm gonna give you an explanation that will err on the softer side, the less risky side, and the less expensive side of breaking your new engine in. So the theory and practice of engine break-in started um, when people really started hot rodding things, the 40s and 50s, and engines were fairly terrible. The machine work was fairly terrible. Uh, the engines were operating above their natural stress level by 50 or 100%, and they really didn't have a lot of, uh, a lot of chance at life. It's very hard to break an old engine. An old engine, you can just stick your foot to the floor and wait till it overheats and let it cool off and start it up and keep doing that over and over and over again. And it's real hard to kill it. A new engine with a bunch of pieces that have never worked together, uh, a mistake on your end could be fatal for the engine. So there's nothing wrong with giving it some time to, to bed up and to become familiar um, with the components. While everything is riding on a sheen of oil, there are no metal parts touching, so you shouldn't have any uh, measurable wear. You should be able to start your new engine up, run it for 20 minutes at, until it's up to temp at 2,000 or 2,500 RPM because you want the oil slinging off the rods onto the cylinder walls, lubricating the cylinder walls, so you don't want to start your new engine up and let it idle. You want to start it up, you want to ensure that there are no leaks, and you want to bring it up to 2,000 or 2,500 RPM just let it run like that for 20 minutes or so, drain the oil out of it, put fresh oil in it, go three to 500 miles of normal service, normal use, lots of uh, you know light acceleration and deceleration and you're just kind of working the combustion gas behind the ring. I know that a lot of people are gonna chime in and say that they beat on their engines from the minute they started them and everything was great. And you can do that and that is accurate. Uh, some of the engines I run in some of my cars, they they don't get any break-in period at all. Their first, their first hit on the dyno could be north of a thousand horsepower. And, and frankly, it doesn't really bother me because it's my money and, and I'm the one taking the risk and, and I'm the one playing with my toy. But for you guys that are on uh, you know, a fairly limited budget or this is a large project in your life, there's nothing wrong with letting the thing break in for a period of time and letting things get familiar. It's, there's no downside, it's just an abuse of your patience. A modern engine with a good amount of integrity of the components doesn't necessarily need a break-in period. It's up to you and your judgment to say, you know, how comfortable you feel in it, because there's really not a right or wrong answer here. So I hope you enjoy this week's tech tip. You can uh, follow us on YouTube here or like us on Facebook, and we'll see you next week. Thanks.